I'm gonna build a tiny home bike camper that I can give away to one of my subscribers. So I picked up some supplies and a used bike, then got right to work. So I started by taking this old bike apart because I'm gonna be needing the wheels for the trailer of this bike camper. I then measured and cut down some two by threes so I can start building the trailer. And I'm using two by threes for the sides and two by twos for the middle and spacing them apart every 10 inches or so. Once I finished screwing the frame together, I cut down a sheet of half inch plywood and painted a few layers of exterior paint onto it because this is going to work as the floor of this camper and I want it to last as long as possible. After letting it dry for about an hour, I put it onto the frame that I built earlier and screwed it into place. I then flipped it over with the help of my neighbor Tom and painted the rest of the bottom side of this trailer with more exterior paint. I then put caulking in between all the cracks to try to keep it as airtight as possible. The next step was to start building the walls of this camper, so I picked up a few sheets of half inch plywood and drew the design of the camper onto them. Once I had the exact shape that I wanted, I cut it out using my jigsaw. Then took another sheet of plywood and placed the piece that I just cut over it, traced it, and cut that one out as well. And to make this camper as light as possible, I had to cut out some pieces of plywood and replace them with insulation, so I drew a bunch of spots that can be cut out, then cut them out using my jigsaw. The next step was to trace the half inch piece of plywood over a half inch piece of insulation, then cut out the insulation to be able to fit into the piece of plywood that I cut out earlier. After cutting out the insulation, I used some expanding spray foam on all the edges of the plywood, then inserted the insulation into place. This stuff is super sticky and expands really well, so it'll make sure this insulation doesn't go anywhere. After letting it sit overnight, I cut off the excess spray foam using this little handsaw. I then measured a bunch of 2x2s down to 30 inches and cut them out using my miter saw. I recessed a bunch of holes into the walls of this bike camper so I can install the roof slats. I screwed them together using inch and a half pocket hole screws and spaced them apart every 10 inches or so. Once I finished installing all the slats, it was time to install the roof, so I cut out a piece of 2 inch foam insulation and this stuff isn't very flexible so I used my square and drew out a bunch of lines on every spot that this insulation would have to bend. Then set my skill saw to about a quarter inch and traced out all the lines that I made which was super time consuming but I got it done. Once I finished cutting out all my lines I laid a bead of construction adhesive onto all the roof slats to make sure the insulation is as sturdy as possible and to cover up any cracks to make sure this camper never leaks. I then rolled the insulation onto the roof and screwed it in using pocket hole screws. Once I finished installing the insulation, I used some more adhesive to fill in the gaps and screw holes, 
because I'm going to be fiberglassing this camper and I want it to be as smooth as possible. I then used 150 grit sandpaper to sand down all the sides and filled in any more cracks and screw holes with more adhesive. After letting the adhesive dry for about 3 hours, I brought the camper shell onto my saw horses so I could start fiberglassing it. And to fiberglass this camper, I'm using clear cast epoxy because normal fiberglass epoxy melts the insulation, basically ruining the whole project and we don't want that. And this resin epoxy takes a lot longer to harden and I can only do one side of the camper at a time, so fiberglassing this entire camper took me about 3 days which sucked really bad because I really wanted to get this video out to you guys so if you're watching this now I really appreciate the patience. And the reason I decided to build another bike camper is because I've got hundreds of comments and emails of people telling me they really want me to build another one but these bike campers cost a pretty penny and take a decent amount of time to make and making one of these bike campers every week then giving it away would cost me way more money than I make which would probably make me go homeless and I have two kids, two dogs, a wife and myself to take care of so I make other building videos in between these bike camper builds to help generate some money so I can pay my bills. So when you see one of my other building videos, just click the play button because it really helps me out. And this camper cost me about $720 to build, which came out of my personal pocket. And I'm going to be giving it away to one of you guys that are watching. So if you want it, give this video a thumbs up, share it with one of your friends, and comment down below why you think you should have it. And I'm going to carefully read through all the comments and pick somebody in the next few weeks. Getting back to the video, I rolled down a thick layer of resin onto the entire camper, then laid the fiberglass cloth over it and tried to take out as many wrinkles as possible, then laid a bunch more resin on top of the cloth and used my squeegee to spread it out. This is going to give the camper a nice hard shell on the outside that we can paint and also make sure the camper never leaks. I then folded the fiberglass cloth over the walls, which will pretty much make sure that this camper stays nice and dry, unless someone decides to poke a hole in it. I then let the shell of this camper sit overnight and started to make the door. This door is going to be pretty basic, except I picked up these two sheets of plexiglass so I can make a small window. And I'm basically making a hole with some grooves that I'm going to router out, so the plexiglass can slide back and forth, allowing the window to open and close. After I cut out my hole, I sanded the entire door using 150 grit sandpaper so I can start to lay some resin. The resin that I'm using is a 1 to 1 ratio and I mix it for at least 2 minutes, then I dump it all onto the door so the door can absorb it before adding the fiberglass sheet. This will allow the fiberglass cloth to stick to the door properly because we don't want this thing peeling off. I then laid another layer of resin and spread it out using my squeegee and let the door sit overnight. The next day I cut off the remaining fiberglass cloth, gave it a quick sanding and painted the entire door using oil based exterior paint that I had tinted this nice grey color. I peeled off the film from the plexiglass and super glued a small piece of wood onto it that will work as the handle so the window can open and close properly. I also super glued these small pieces on the side of the window so it doesn't fall out. And just like that we have a window that opens and closes. The next step was to install the base of the camper to the shell so I screwed it together using pocket hole screws then flipped it around and did the same thing.
I then spent about two hours sanding the crap out of all the fiberglass to make sure it's as smooth as possible before I start painting it. After sanding it, I wiped it down using a damp cloth to get rid of any loose material so the paint can stick properly. And I'm using the same exterior paint that I used on the door earlier, and I'm going to be adding three layers to it to make sure it's really well coated and waterproofed. And for those of you who are planning to build your own bike camper, we made detailed step-by-step -step plans that you can pick up for just 18 bucks, and I'm going to post it down in the description below. The next day, I flipped the camper over and started to build the brackets that'll hold the wheels. And I'm basically using 2x3s to build a box to hold the axles of the wheels to allow them to spin properly. And while I did this, my friend Tom painted the entire interior of this camper, which was a super big help, so thank you Tom. I cut down a bunch of small sections of this metal rod in order to hold the wheels in place. I connected them to the axle of the wheel, then screwed them into the box that I made earlier. I made sure the wheels were as straight as possible before screwing them in so they can spin properly, tightened it down, then Tom painted another layer of exterior paint to the bottom of the camper to try and preserve it as best as possible. I then added some adjustable legs to it that I built earlier to help keep it stable while someone's inside of it. We then flipped it over and it was time to add some black stripes to it to try to make it look as nice as possible. The next day, it was finally time to install the door and do some last final touches before taking this thing out for a ride. We added a door stopper and painted it, then added the door hinges and screwed the door directly into the camper. After making sure it opened and closed properly, I added a handle, a little bracket so you can add a padlock, and reflectors to the back of it so people can see it at night. And to pull this camper, Mooncool sent us one of their e-bikes that we're also going to give away with this camper. This thing has dual motors, which makes it all-wheel drive. It's got 4-inch fat tires. It goes up to 20 miles per hour and has up to a 45-mile range with a 350-pound weight capacity. So thank you, Mooncool, for sending us this e-bike. We really appreciate it. I'm going to link them down in the description just in case anyone wants to get one. But now that the camper's all finished up, let's take this thing out for a ride. <laughs> 